Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much. Say, still we, and you are right. Executive Director of CARI, Jose Maria Carlos, the Archbishop, Nuncio Patikibele, good evening, sir. Representative of the National and Provincial and Local Government of the Republic of Argentina. Your Excellency Ambassador Kumele Lekwana and Mr. Chabu Kwana. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, Consuls Generals, and members of the diplomatic corps present here. My colleagues from South African government, can I ask them to rise from the Department of Mainly Agriculture, Fishers and Forest, and then the rest of you. Thank you so much. This is my Thank you so much. Uh, I must say, say that uh, I'm, I'm not alone. As a matter of fact, I'm being accompanied by my wife, Tandeka, but I'm um, so. <laughs> Honourable guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to be here this evening and share a few thoughts of my thoughts on this very important occasion as reflecting on Dr. Nelson Mandela and what it really means to us, not just as South Africans, but as humanity. Let me start by thanking God the Almighty for having made it impossible for me, my wife Tandega, and the South African delegation to be here this evening and share with you the centenary of the birth of the father of our democracy, the first president of the Democratic Republic of South Africa, Dr. Nelson Mandela. Also, I would like to profusely extend a word of utmost gratitude to Karen for allowing us to share with you the meaning of the life of Nelson Mandela to the people of South Africa, the people of Africa, but most importantly, the meaning of Nelson Mandela to the peace-loving people of the world. Dr. Nelson Mandela was 100 years ago in a very rural village. He grew up like any other young boy heading cattle. Madam Ambassador, I guess it is very important to stress that point up front to illustrate the point that ordinary people can achieve extraordinary things provided they are prepared to pay the price. The biggest question in all of us who remain behind is to first understand what type of a man he was, what drove and inspired him to dedicate his entire life to serving the people. How did he survive the pain, tribulations, torture, and vilification by those who were intent on belittling him and his people just because he decided to be on the side of the poorest of the poor, the oppressed, the economically marginalized, and the downtrodden? Your Excellencies, Mandela was indeed an ordinary person like you and me. He did sometimes feel the pain. Let me illustrate this point by sharing with you what happened to him sometime in 1969. This is an account he himself gave. He says, on this day, my Jesus called him and gave him a telegram. I'm not sure whether the young generation knows what a telegram is. Uh, I, I hope you'll explain to them. There were no SMSs, um, what's up, <laughs> you name them. 
the telegram was telling him that his mom had died of heart attack. He's in prison at the time. It is easy to realize why she died of heart attack. Before that, a year before, in 1968, she had gone to visit her son for the first time on Robin Island. Obviously, she did not like the condition she found her son in, like any other mother. She had some pains. He wanted to, he wanted to get a permission to go and bury his mother. His request was denied. To capture how he felt, allow me to quote his exact words. I quote, it added to my grief that I was not able to bury my mother, which was my responsibility as her eldest child and the only son, unquote. Soon after that, the same year, he learned that police had gone to pick up and arrest his wife leaving his daughters, Zinani and Zinzi. It is said, I quote, the police dragged Winnie away while Zeni and Zinzi, who were less than 10 years old, clung to her skirts, unquote. The heartless apartheid and racist police were not bothered, but they continued and arrested her. As if that was not enough, in the same year, Mandela received another telegram, this time informing him that his eldest son, Tebe Ige, had died in a car accident. Mandela's feelings that day are best summarized by what he himself says again, I quote, I was already done overwrought about my, my wife. I was still grieving for my mother. And then one hears such news. It left a hole in my heart that can never be filled, unquote. Again, he was denied the right to bury his son. This experience of Mandela explains why he laughed and cared about children so much. Hungry children often were very special to Mandela. There's no better tribute you can give to the children than following on Mandela's footsteps and taking care of our children. If I can be allowed to strike a personal note at this stage, Program Director, although the good Lord spared me the pain of not being able to bury my parents, I know the feeling of not being able to bury someone who's close to you because the apartheid system had decided to do so. Sometime in 1986, while in prison on Robin Island, I was expecting my father and my mother to visit me for the first time on Robin Island. They never arrived. And instead, I received a telegram telling me that they could no longer come to visit me because our grandmother had died. They were going to come with my sister here, Ambassador Gwala, and her husband, Mr. Jabu Gwala. In South Africa at that time, we were brought up by our grandparents because parents would either be staying away from home or they would have left in the early hours of the day and back at dusk. Therefore, we ourselves had been raised by our grandmother, and obviously, I was not able to bid her farewell. The United Nations declared apartheid a crime against humanity. It was declared a crime against humanity because it killed people. You all remember the Shanville massacre in 1960, where 69 unarmed people were, were shot down by apartheid police. Thousands of school children killed by the same government in 1976 for asking for better education. Solomon Anakla, who was 21 years old, and many other young people were hanged by the very system for calling for democracy in the land of their birth. A thing, a thing taken for granted by many other countries. This is a crime, Nelson Mandela, Albertina Sisulu, Oliver Tambo, Chief Albert Tutule, and many other patriots were prepared to lay down their lives for. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, you should now understand why Nelson Mandela loved his people so much. He saw how an unjust system could brutalize children. He understood the pain of not being part of growth of your children. That is why he did so much to ensure that the welfare of children is protected and guaranteed. 
in South Africa I started the child, the child grant, giving money by government to ensure that no child goes to bed without food. It is as an incumbent to all of us gathered here tonight to ensure that we provide food security to our children and children of the world. It is not fair and just that there are still children who are dying of malnutrition and starvation when there's so much food in the world. To honor this man, let us commit to fight for the welfare of children in the world and to ensure that there is no child who goes to bed without eating. Economic inequality continues to plague our planet. The world is getting more unequal. It is estimated that 82% of the wealth created last year went to the richest 1% of the global population. The 3.7 billion people who make up the poorest half of humanity got nothing. That says without doubt that global economy is broken. This is injustice that Mandela committed his entire life to fight. His fight was not just about injustice in South Africa. It was about fighting for a, for a fair, just and equitable world order. We therefore must rededicate ourselves and ensure that we also identify with the billions who continue to suffer the indignity of poverty. Let us be Mandela's soldiers for a better planet for its entire people. The Nelson Mandela Foundation dedicated this year as Mandela's day of action against poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, Mandela had this to say about poverty, which he detested. I quote him, poverty is not an accident. Overcoming poverty is not a task of charity. It is an act of justice. Like slavery and apartheid, it is man-made and can be removed by the actions of human beings." Unquote. Let us therefore honor this man of God by committing to roll up our sleeves and fight poverty. Education was also very close to Nelson Mandela. He really believed that it is through education that we can change the world for the better. The struggle for education was not just in the greater South Africa. Even behind bars, Mandela, by example, he himself studied his during his incarceration on Robin Island. Young inmates like myself were encouraged to start when we, we came to the island. As it has been um, summarized by the program director, I did my first degree on Robin Island through correspondence. To summarize his thoughts about education, allow me to borrow from him again, he said. I quote, education is a great engine of personal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that the child of a farm worker can become the president of a great nation. It is what we make out of what we have not what you are giving that separates one person from another, unquote. Your Excellencies, this morning the ambassador took us to a special memorial, ESMA. I still do not understand, I still do not know how I felt. Oh yes, it was very emotional for me. It took me back to about 25 years ago when I myself was a prisoner. I'm still shivering from what I saw and heard. I still cannot understand how can 5,000 people disappear without trace just in seven years. How can other human beings keep prisoners in woods and shackles? We learn that children were separated from their mothers and illegally treated. Indeed, at ESMA, another Holocaust was perpetrated. That should not have been allowed to happen and the world should stand up and condemn this in strongest steps. In South Africa, many patriots also disappeared and others were secret, secretly buried without their families knowing during apartheid rule. 
So the search still continues of the victims of tyranny. Our brothers and sisters are scattered all over the continent of Africa, where apartheid regime assassinated our pensions, even after they left the country. Southern Africa is littered with many graves of cross-border raids by South African government. Simil similarly, the people of this country should not rest until the last person who disappeared has been accounted for. Mandela was persecuted, imprisoned, and tortured for his anger for justice and democracy. If all these loving people of the world were to ensure that this never occurs again, it will definitely be a befitting tribute to Nelson Mandela, the Nobel Peace Prize winner. Let us not fool ourselves. There are still many rivers to cross. As I conclude, let me leave you with these wise words from the giant of our times, Nelson Mandela. This poses a challenge to us never to stop fighting for a better world and universe. I quote, I've walked that long road to freedom. I've made steps along the way, but I've discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I've taken a moment here to rest, to see a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I've come. But I can rest only for a moment, for with freedom come responsibilities, and I dare not linger, for my long work is not yet ended and cold. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, indeed, our long walk is not yet ended. Thank you for your attention.